it is so good to be here with you live today. We've been out of the studio for several months, as you all know, uh, because of COVID-19, but we're back. And we want to continue to share our thoughts and information with you as we are the organization that is sponsored by the Office of National Drug Control Policy. And so, therefore, the thoughts and opinions offered on this show are not necessarily the opinions of the Office of National Drug Control Policy. We're very, very happy today to be here with you, and we have some exciting news and some updates and uh, other activities that we want to uh, have with you today. And we also have a great guest star that we will have later on in the show. But first, for immediate release, we have some breaking news. The House leadership cancels its vote on marijuana legalization. That's right. Today, after weeks of pushback, House Democratic leaders canceled a vote on the Moore Act, a bill to federally legalize and commercialize marijuana. Dr. Kevin Sabat, who is a former senior drug policy advisor to the Obama administration, released the following statement. This is a massive victory for public health, safety, and quite frankly, common sense. Thanks to the actions taken by our thousands of supporters and many coalition members, we have activa activated nationwide. We have defeated the Moore Act. While almost 200,000 Americans have died from COVID-19, and millions more are desperate for aid due to the resulting economic fallout, the fact that marijuana legalization was even on anyone's mind is inconceivable. This bill was a non-starter from the very beginning. It would accomplish nothing more than greatly benefiting, uh, benefiting an addiction for profit industry and make our country safe, uh, less safe by removing marijuana testing requirements from safety sensitive positions such as truck drivers and airline pilots. <coughs> Furthermore, encouraging marijuana use is disadvantaged communities and a social injustice. In states that have expanded this industry, pot shops are disproportionately located in communities of color and low income. Overall, less than 2% of the marijuana industry is owned by minorities from any community. Those most harmed by previous drug laws are not the ones benefited by commercialization. The bill would only enrich the wealthy white investors from big tobacco, alcohol conglomerates, and big pharma. <coughs> Today's news tells us many things. Creating new addiction, non uh, new addiction for profit drug industries is untenable with the electoral during an election year. Once again, we learned that marijuana legalization is not inevitable despite what well-paid uh, lobbyists are telling us. And finally, uh, all of our allies have ensured no new marijuana legalization bills have made significant progress for yet another Congress. So that is something that we can be very proud of as we work together uh, at, in our coalition, the Coalition for Urban Youth and Family Development, and as we work with our partners across the country. Uh, a couple of uh, things that we want to bring uh, back to your attention. Once again, we know that uh, coping with the traumatic events of things like COVID-19 uh, are shocking, scary, and dangerous, and uh, they can affect someone emotionally and physically. Experiences like COVID-19 uh, acts of uh, violence such as uh, assault or abuse, terrorist acts and mass shootings, as well as car crashes and other accidents can all be traumatic. Researchers are investigating the factors that help people cope with that increase uh, for their risk for other physical or mental health problems following a traumatic event. But some of the warning signs uh, that you might be experiencing from the trauma of COVID-19 include feeling anxious, sad, or angry, uh, trouble concentrating or sleeping, and continually thinking about the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, for most people, these are normal and expected responses and uh, generally lessen over time. However, because of the fact that COVID-19 and the pandemic has uh, ex expressed itself and has uh, been around for such a long time, uh, it is causing uh, even more trauma amongst people because it's not going away. Uh, in some cases, these responses continue for longer periods of time and interfere with our everyday life. And if they are interfering with daily life and are not getting better over time, it is 
important to seek professional help and some signs that an individual uh, may need help include uh, worrying a lot or feeling very anxious or sad or fearful, uh, starting to cry often, uh, having trouble thinking clearly, having frightening thoughts or flashbacks or uh, reliving negative experiences, uh, feeling angry, resentful, and irritable uh, for long periods of time, uh, having nightmares or difficulty sleeping, avoiding places or people that bring back disturbing memories and responses, and becoming isolated from family and friends. And some of the things that you can look for in children and teens, uh, that they often will respond differently than uh, adults, and uh, especially those children that are under six years old. And those things include uh, bedwetting, or <coughs> even after having learned how to use the toilet, uh, forgetting or being, being able to, unable to talk, uh, acting out scary events during playtime, and uh, being unusually clingy with the parents. And when you start seeing these uh, physical traumas, then you need to reach out for help. And some of the places that we can reach out for help is, first of all, uh, Wayne County uh, and Wayne Metro. And uh, they have uh, a line. Uh, you can go to www.waynemetro.org uh, slash cases. And if you do, you can uh, find assistance for food, income, plumbing, uh, rent and mortgage assistance, water and energy assistance, uh, property tax assistance, and even uh, assistance with uh, the burial uh, of a loved one. And then you can also go uh, to Detroit, Michigan, uh, that's DetroitMI.gov slash coronavirus, and you can find assistance uh, not only for uh, yourself, but uh, as far as where to get uh, COVID testing. You can find assistance for food and income. If you own a small business, there is a small business hub where you can get assistance for loans and uh, other assistance for uh, PPE, that's personal protection equipment. Also, you can find uh, the latest requirements from the state of Michigan by going to uh, michigan.gov and uh, backslash coronavirus. And there you can get information on the latest requirements by the state and the uh, updates for the status of the state. And then here locally, uh, you can go to um, 12048 Grand River any Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 a.m., or 12 noon, and that is the Detroit Association of Black Organizations, and they are doing a food distribution and also COVID testing. Once again, that's 12048 Grand River. It's right at the corner of Grand River in Wyoming, and there's assistance for you there. Also, the Hartford Memorial Baptist Church, which is located at 18700 James Cousins Highway, is doing a food distribution on Wednesdays, and also uh, at the corner of Seven Mile and Stansbury, uh, there is free walk-in COVID testing. So if you need to be tested for COVID, you can contact the Hartford Memorial Baptist Church uh, office at the Hartford Institute, and that number is 313-861-1400. And they will be able to give you a time and set up a, uh, uh, set up a date for you to come in and get COVID tested. But if you just want to walk in, uh, go to the corner of Seven Mile in Stansbury, uh, and they are doing COVID testing free there on Mondays. Uh, some of the signs that we can look for also uh, uh, from our young people is to avoid over underage drinking. And both young adults and alcohol and college-bound students, we know that a lot of students are, are preparing to attend college. Some of them are doing it virtually, uh, but also uh, some of them are actually going off to college and taking their steps towards independence. Uh, and as you start to transition to college, we can find that uh, Alcohol avoidance can help a student keep ac academic plans on track, and alcohol can also disrupt your future. 
Uh, pilots can overwhelm new students as they deal with changing social and academic expectations and the responsibilities that come with being on the run. It can also be challenging uh, that about one-third of the first-year students fail to enroll for their second year. Some students may use alcohol as a way to cope with college pressures. They may also believe that alcohol use is common and socially expected among their new friends, and to drink is to fit in. Students, however, tend to significantly overestimate how often their fellow students use alcohol. Due to these and other reasons, your young adult is entertaining, uh, is entering an environment where alcohol use among 18 to 20 year olds escalates dramatically. Overall, full time first year students tend to drink more than their peers who do not attend college and suffer significantly more alcohol related consequences. So, one of the things that you can do to help your young student is to start a conversation. In talking with your young adult about alcohol, look for opportunities to raise the topic naturally. Discussions about majors and course selections can lead to conversations about the ways in which alcohol can, you, uh, can use can disrupt academic success and their career options. Discuss ways to handle situations where alcohol use uh, by other students might create a problem such as uh, interrupted study time or unwanted sexual advances. As you tour the campus area, note how many alcohol outlets are in the community. Emphasize that no matter where alcohol is available, underage drinking represents a risk and is a choice that has consequences. So remember, have a conversation, and your conversation goals are to emphasize how underage drinking can undermine health, safety, and academic achievement. Make your no alcohol use position clear and demonstrate your willingness to help find constructive alternatives to drinking. And you've got to learn how to keep that conversation going. Continue to keep the lines of communication open through all the college years. Regular, regular conversations show your continuing concern about your young adult's well-being and office also provide an opportunity to reinforce your zero tolerance stand for underage drinking. That's right, a zero tolerance stance for underage drinking. Academic, social, or emotional difficulties can be signs of heavy drinking as well as risk factors for alcohol use. A college, college is a significant investment of time and money. Help assure that your young adult gets the most out of their college experience. What you say, not what you, <coughs> and what you say or not say about alcohol can make a lifetime of a difference. So please remember to have that conversation with your young adult as they head off to college. A couple of quick reminders. As uh, many of you know, today, September the 17th at 6 o'clock p.m., we will be having our final Coalition for Urban Youth and Family Development uh, meeting for the fiscal year. I'm happy to report that we have uh, been awarded a continuation grant to continue the coalition on uh, for the 2020-2021 season. Uh, we are very, very happy to uh, report that, and so please feel free to call in, uh, I mean, participate in our Zoom meeting, and uh, the Zoom ID is 790-495-5710. Once again, get on your laptop and zoom in with us for the Coalition for Urban Youth and Family Development Coalition meeting. It begins at 6 o'clock p.m. The Zoom meeting ID is 790-495-5710. And the password is one capital L lowercase c lowercase u capital X capital L. Once again, the password is one capital L lowercase c lowercase u capital X and capital L. So now, as soon as we come back from this brief break from our sponsors, 
you're going to come on with our special guest and have a wonderful experience. So we'll take it away and give it to our sponsors. And once again, thank you for watching Urban Review. Love your Avis Ford because at Avis Ford we make it easy to get you your no money down monthly payment right over the phone. We call it Shop by Phone, and it's the best way we know to get you your payment options fast. You want leather and a sunroof? How about an upgrade to all-wheel drive? Just give us a call. Shop online, shop by phone, or visit us at Telegraph at 12 Mile. Call 1 800 Shop Ford. Meet Danny. High school senior, 17 years of age, all A student. Danny is just now finding out he scored 1,490 out of 1,600 on his SAT. Danny's friend decided to ask, how did you do it? Danny replied, I believe every day is a test to fail or succeed. You choose. The effects of vaping is the one test that Danny chose not to study for. Vaping does not discriminate on who becomes addicted. Over 2 million high school students use some type of electronic cigarette device. The top tobacco companies also own vaping devices. The FDA found that vaping contains some of the same toxic chemicals as regular cigarettes that lead to cancer. So whether you smoke traditional cigarettes with tobacco or smoke electronic cigarettes using nicotine, your health is at risk. There's no safe way to smoke. For more information, contact the Center for Urban Youth and Family Development. The non-medical use of prescription drugs, including opioids, is a growing concern in our communities, affecting all ages, including our youth. If the medication wasn't prescribed to you or has expired, don't take it. If your name isn't on the bottle, it's not meant for you to swallow. Addiction is real and lives are being ruined. Or worse yet, lost. Visit PreventionDetroit.org slash opioids to find prescription Dropbox locations. Welcome back to Urban Review. And yes, I have on my face mask because I am appropriately social distancing with my special guest here today, none other than Miss Camilla Wordlow. Yeah. And uh, she is a sophomore at uh, Talladega College and uh, here doing her schoolwork virtually. And I thought I'd bring her in to interview her and uh, just get some feedback on what's it like being a virtual college student. Well, being a virtual college student is currently challenging at the moment. Um, it's something that I'm not as accustomed to, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, switching into that transition has been a bit difficult, but I'm holding on and keeping God at the head of the center of pushing past this pandemic and working to succeed. That's fantastic. It's good to hear that you're allowing your uh, spirituality to help you uh, deal with the anxieties that are associated with uh, trying to learn virtually. Now, you had an opportunity to spend your freshman year on campus, right? And, yes. and go away and kind of be away from home and start learning how to be independent and yes. being on your own. And then all of a sudden, you're back at home. Yeah. And what, what, is, what is that transition like? Uh, the transition of being on campus and coming back home, um, on campus I feel that there's more structure mm. because my campus didn't have really a lot of, I guess, what typical campus have things to do mm -hmm. frequently or parties, like everything would be past 30 to 45 minutes away versus I wouldn't really partake in that. And so I would have more structure, I guess, having the only thing to be able to do is complete my schoolwork while on campus versus coming home it's kind of like you're back in your normal of freedom i guess and uh -huh. things that are like your friends <laughs> lots your of distractions lifestyle. yeah lots yeah. of distractions and so i think 
that difference is um, has made the transition a bit different, but mm. it's been adjustable, I guess, getting back in the flow of things. So. Yeah. Well, the fact that you were on campus probably helped you uh, learn how to do, you know, study, study methods more, yeah. and those kind of things. And, and stay so. more motivated. Right. Okay. Because, I mean, you're in the setting of, like, the access to the books and the things that you need versus the library, the library and, like yeah and those kind the of things. quiet right. spaces versus at home it's yeah. like yeah because you got a little brother, brother yeah. you got your friends and yeah and y you're working now too aren't uh, yes. is that correct yeah so uh you you uh, got a little distraction from uh, earning some income and yeah. uh you know trying to balance it all while still in school, I guess. Okay, the, the whole balancing act. Yes. Got it, got it. Well, one of the interesting things that uh, I always share a little secret about my guest, mm -hmm. and uh, one of my secrets uh, about Camille is I've known her since she was uh, about maybe 10 Seven. years old or so, running around <laughs> uh, with uh, her mom, Miss uh, Cara Thomas, and uh, she is the uh, manager uh, with the substance use disorder uh, unit uh, with the Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network. So I've uh, seen Camille at all of our little events and one of the things that I learned about Camille is that she has a tremendous, tremendously beautiful voice and a very powerful voice and uh, in fact uh, prior to the pandemic we were actually scheduling having her in concert to do a fundraiser uh, for the center and the coalition. And uh, because of the pandemic and uh, all of the restrictions that are associated with that, we ended up having to cancel that event. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we know that Camille still has a wonderful, beautiful voice. Thank and I'm going to put her on the spot right <laughs> here to ask her to, to take off the mask and <laughs> just give us a little, little song, uh, whatever's on your heart. Okay. Um. Trouble ain't gonna be here every day Even though sometimes it seems like it won't go away After you've done all that you know how To keep from breaking down Just believe it's gonna get much better after a while Trouble ain't gonna be here every day even though sometimes it seems like it won't go away after you've done all that you know how to keep from breaking down just believe it's gonna get much better after a while yay <laughs> that was great oh yep. man that was all right that was awesome thank, thank you, you so much that was tremendous. Thank now, you. with your career, uh, are, are you uh, planning anything? You got anything coming up? Any activities? Um, uh, what, what, what's your next step on that? Well, my next step, I'm seeking to, uh, I'm currently a psychology major, but I'm thinking about getting a minor in communications. Uh -huh. And personally, like, I don't know, with this whole pandemic, it's kind of been like an iffy of like what I, want to do uh -huh. but as far as talking with cousins of mine since they've been in the music industry getting yeah. into the music industry or uh, -huh. uh as some who are already there um i've i have a song that i've written about my freshman year of high school okay and i tried to like do a little bit with it um in 2018 but i didn't really finish it and listening to it now it's like i would think i want to make it like a family song maybe okay. like have my own verse and then maybe a mix of their rap in it cleanly okay. though um because right. the song is called struggle but i wrote it based upon detroit okay. and so i'm thinking about maybe doing something with that and maybe getting more into the writing field to use my gift accordingly all right. Well, we are really, really blessed and pleased to have had you with us today. Thank you for uh, having me. Ms. Camille Wurlow, and keep watching out. You're going to hear great things about her. Thank and you. as we come to a close of the show, I'd like to close out with <clears throat> the same way we always do. 
and that is when you're up against a trouble, meet it squarely face to face, plant your feet and set your shoulders, lift your chin and take a brace. And when the worst is bound to happen in spite of all that you can do, remember you may fail but you may conquer, so see it through. Black may be the clouds about you and your future may seem grim, but don't let your nerve desert you and keep yourself in fighting trim. And when it's veiled to try and dodge it in spite of all that you can do, remember running from it will not save you, see it through. Even hope may seem but futile when with troubles you'll be set. But remember, you're simply facing what other men have met. So if you fail, fall, still fighting, don't give up whatever you do. Keep your eyes to the front, your head high to the finish, and see it through. And in the thoughts of our friend Nelson Mandela and the poem that he said to himself for 27 years while he was in captivity, out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods there be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud, and under the bludgeoning of chance, my head is bloodied, but I'm bowed. Beyond this place of raft and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. For it matters not how straight to gate, how charged with punishment the scroll, I am the captain of my fate and the master of my soul. Once again, thank you for watching Urban Review. Mm -hmm.